My name is Keila, and I'm the owner of Travelfly Adventures and founder of Travelfly Presents Boss Babes Travel. I've been in business since April of 2018, and these are my colleagues. There's Lena and Jessica Starts of JD Scribes and What's Poppin' in the USA, right? So through my years of owning a business, I've learned quite a bit about how they operate and what's needed to run it. And, you know, through the years, I've learned that there are ways to work smarter and not harder. And in this day and age of technology, we have a lot of help at our fingertips, and some of it's free, some of it isn't. But my goal and our goal in this three-part series is to really help you, un, you know, start your 2024 year off with a bang. Whether you're new to this or you've been doing this a while, this webinar is for you, okay? Um, so all of us at some point in time in our businesses, we get stuck, right? And so this webinar is to help you get unstuck in the processes and workflows of running your business. So first up, let's talk about working um, smarter and not harder. Right. Mm. Can you guys still see me? <laughs> yes, most definitely. Okay, All right, perfect. Okay. Yeah, that's going to get edited out. Sorry. I'm going mm -hmm. <laughs> to have to edit that out. I can't make this smaller. smaller. Okay. I don't know. As long as you can still see me, you're fine. All right. So first up, let's talk about this. Let's talk about working smarter and not harder. So what do I mean by this? So when I first got into the industry, I was stuck just using Google Documents for everything. And there's nothing wrong with using Google Documents, but right. literally emailing each of my clients individually and back and forth with their itinerary, their updates and everything to do with their trip, copying and pasting pictures, trying to find pictures on the internet, all of those things is very time consuming. And that time consumption even ran over into my social media. So it's nice and all having things like Google Docs, but I wanna talk about things like Canva and Constant Contact um, that can make your life a lot simpler. So right. let's start with Camp. Let's start with Canva. Canva is uh, a graph is for graphic design. So right. it's user friendly. It has a wide array of features um, that make it an amazing tool for creating stunning graphics. Uh, it's really easy to use, and you get a variety of designs. You can collaborate with other people. Um, you can create your. Um, it allows you to create your color palettes for your brand, so that right. you have branding consistency. Um, it's accessible. So. It has a cloud-based tool and designs that can be accept, accessed and edited from anywhere. So you're able to do it, you know, have flexibility. I love right. that I can log into Canva from my phone and literally do any type of flyer or graphic that I need to do if I'm on the run or if I'm, you know, traveling and I want to get a little bit of work done. I can do it from my phone or tablet. So it's extremely you know, flexible. You know, Keila, I actually use it for, um, I, it's like I, I reference back to it for, you said your brand kit with my colors mm -hmm. and my fonts. If yeah. I'm working on like another project somewhere else and I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't remember what my, you know, my CMYK code is or whatever, that little hashtag with, the, with the six digits, right? Yep. So I'm just like, let me go into Canva, look at my actual brand brand kit, kit you know yeah. what I mean, and find that info so canva is a really good one it's good canva for a lot is of things. great for that and so just like you mentioned i've actually when i've gone into other platforms and i needed to remember what my colors were i went into canva and copied it and then pasted it right. into there and yeah. it works 100 i even created my background in canva with my right. business logo and everything so it helps with that brand consistency Yes, now, the yes. other part of this that I wanted to talk about was using constant contact. Um, constant contact is great for email marketing. If you're trying to build your um, build your email list, constant contact is a comprehensive email marketing tool with a variety of features that helps you optimize your campaign. So it's really easy to use as well. Um, it even has target audience segmentation. So what's so that? is it free or paid? So it is paid. Okay. You have to pay for um, constant contact. I don't pay a whole lot for it, but I do pay each month for it. And okay. I find that it's beneficial for my business. And if you're wanting to streamline your processes and set up automations, 
constant contact is the way to go. So right. if you're constantly sending out emails, marketing and stuff like that, like you do, right? Constantly. Yeah. Yep. If, yep. Constant contact. So let's talk about that a little bit, like automations. So typically when you sign up for a newsletter, you may get an email right away, right? It'll say, welcome to blah, blah, blah. Thank you for joining our email list or whatever. That's not somebody who's emailing you right then and there. No, it doesn't happen like that. That's an automation that's been set up. Um, and people set up automations for even when you're, you know, um, what you call it, um, buying something from their store and they want to send you a thank you. So that's, you know, that right there, that's an automation. Target audience segmentation. I don't know if if everybody knows too much about that, but if you click a certain link in the email, it'll segment you out or, you know, transfer you to another email list showing, um, showing that you had interest in that. So let's say you bought, um, let's say Lena sent you a newsletter and she was selling soaps. Okay. Um, in that newsletter, if you click the link that sells that soap, she could then target you out of that email, right? You go to a separate list for those soaps. So if she ever ran a special or anything like that, she can now have a whole have you in that email list because you showed interest, you know, to go and send you another email saying, "Hey, these are my soaps, you know. Right. Um this is another sale that's going on since you showed interest." Right. And also, and Constant Contact also analyzes your details. Um it gives you analytics from every campaign, your open rates, your click through rates, your conversions. Um, so that way you're able to uh, make better decisions for future strategies. Right. And I really want to talk about mobile optimization. That's another thing that's key because <laughs> <laughs> people use their cell phone for everything. I use my cell phone for everything. And one of the things that's a really big turnoff to me is when I'm on my phone and I go to someone's website and it's not mobile optimized. Right. <laughs> and what I mean it's by that all... is it's all like jarbled, right? It's all over the place. So you'll find some information here, some's up here. It's small, it's big. It's, you know, you got to shift your phone around to try to see. And I will click out and move on to something yeah, else. Yeah, if it doesn't present or look right. Right. And so one of the things the that I like about Constant Contact is, is it does have mobile optimization. So like if I'm sending out a newsletter, uh, it automatically optimizes it for your cell phone. So yes. you can open it on your cell phone and it looks just the way mm -hmm. you want the reader to see it. It's not all big or small and over here and over there. They're not having to shift their phone. Cut around. off. Yeah, cut Something off. Like and it's not yeah. making you look unprofessional because the biggest mm -hmm. thing as a business owner is you want to look professional. So that's one of the things that they have with Constant Contact as well. And it integrates. So Constant Contact also integrates with platforms like Shopify. So your shops, WordPress, Facebook, um, everything that you need to do to streamline your marketing processes. So Canva mm -hmm. and Constant Contact, actually, they do work together. Um, mm -hmm. So when you're editing, like for your newsletter, if you want to add pictures from Canva, you can go over into Canva and do that and then add it into mm -hmm. Constant Contact. Um, That's nice. But I just want to make sure that you, you know, leverage these tools, okay? It can lead to higher productivity, better outcomes, right. and more efficient processes. Right. And so if there's a free version, use it. Canva has both a free and a paid version. Yes. So fully take advantage of the free until you can afford maybe to pay for the, you know what I mean, for the little higher, higher priced one, but. Absolutely. And that's something that I did in the beginning when I was first starting out, I utilized the free Canva version. Um, now I have the paid one because you get a little right. bit more. It's $14.99 right. a month. But again, to right. me, it's worth it. So right. you just budget that in. Um, right. I pay for my constant contact. And before I think right. it was like, I think I was paying like $9.99 a month for it or oh, something. Phenomenal like that. Right. little tiny, right? Yeah, it might be a little bit more now, depending on what you're going to do with it. I do know you have to pay a little yeah. bit more for like automations and things like that. But right. um, the and bells the and whistles. The bells. with What's Poppin' USA, Small Business Support Network. And today I am with two of my lovely girl bosses, Miss Keila Reyes and Miss Jessica Starks. And we are three small business owners here chatting with you about 
all the amazing things that you are going to need to jumpstart and ignite your business to get that first quarter popping and going, right? Because we all have New Year's resolutions. We're all going to go to the gym. We're all going to eat right, right? We've got all these, whatever we're going to do for our, our personal, but what about your business? Sometimes, you know, if you've been in business for a while, things get a little stale. Um, and then sometimes if you're just starting out, you just don't know what you don't know, right? So today I'm actually going to talk to you about branding. When you think of branding, Keela or Jessica, what comes to your mind? What do you think of when somebody says branding? I think of how my business looks. Okay. Yeah, okay. How you outlook. Okay. You know, so, yourself, how people see you. There we go. So I tend to say branding is your business's personality. Think about it like that, right? So if yourself was a brand, the way you walk out the door, right? The way you present yourself, the way you look, the way you speak, the way you act, your manners, your actual personality, all of that is your personal brand, okay? So think about that for your business. What does your business brand look like? It's not only what you see. It's not only a logo, right? I've got a logo. Where is it? Right here on my shirt, this USA. Okay, but what does that actually mean? So let's think about Let's think about a brand that everybody knows. Both of y'all know McDonald's, right? Right. So when you think of McDonald's, what do you think of? Do you think of the big M? Think of the golden arches. The golden arches, right? And most kids that we're driving on the highway and they see that big M and those golden arches, they don't even speak yet, right? They can't even talk yet, but they want that Happy Meal because they know what it stands for, right? So, but the M or the Golden Arches is not their brand. When McDonald's first started, they started because they were looking for convenience foods, fast, quick, cheap, right? Fast, quick, cheap. That's how they branded. People began to know them because they were fast, they were quick, they were cheap. You could drive through, you could take your kids, give them a little meal, keep on. Mama doesn't have to cook dinner after the soccer game, all of that, right? And once people started going and started becoming accustomed to that brand, to that service, then we began to look for those arches. Because then we knew what those arches meant. They knew it was going to be fast, it was going to be quick, and it was going to be cheap. Right? So branding is not only what you see, it's what you're all about as well. Okay? So why don't we take another brand that everybody knows? Let's look at Walmart. Walmart is like a rabbit hole. Right. It's like one of those things you go in there for one item and you come out with a cart full of who knows what. Right. Because they have what? Everything. You need socks. You need underwear. You need a steak. You need tampons. You need lotion. You need dog food. You need hemorrhoid cream. It doesn't matter. They got everything, right? So what is Walmart's branding? Like a one-stop convenient shopping experience for the person who does not have time to that mama who want to get them school clothes and them groceries and pick up the damn prescription all at the same damn time, right? So that's what Walmart is. It's convenient all in one place. It's not just that star. We know what the star means. 
it's attached to a building that you can get your tires rotated. You could get a Christmas tree, right? You could go get Subway. You could get your nails done. They might even have a, a pet grooming shop in there. And like I said, hemorrhoid cream, right? They got everything in one spot. That is branding, okay? It is the entire personality of your business. It includes your logo, the visual. It includes your colors. My colors, USA, red, white, and blue, right? No brainer. Look at Keela's colors behind her. She's blue with the teal and the gold, right? Those are your colors. So every time you do a content post with your AI and you do social media, what are you doing? You're pulling in those colors. You're pulling in that font, that script, that lettering. You don't use a different one every time. Every time you see Target, are they using a different font? Every time you see Walmart, are they using a different font or are they using the exact same one? Right? It's repetition. It's brand recognition. You're like, oh, those colors. I know Keely uses those colors. If she was all of a sudden using red, white, and blue, you'd be like, something's not right here, right? Or if all of a sudden I'm wearing like teal and yellow and gold and shit, it 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 doesn't look right, right? So cohesive, cohesive branding, everything vibes together. So your logo, what does it say about you? What does it say about your company, right? Um, it's got to have a theme. We're looking at travel fly. So she's got the world and she's got an airplane. That is cohesive branding. That logo, right? Those That color scheme is all earthy, crunchy. It's water. It's the earth that you, you know, the, the vision of the earth that you think of. All of that, right? That is strategic, right, Keela? That's strategic, right? That is branding. That is putting it all together. That means when we go to her website, this is what we're going to get. That means when I call Keela and I'm like, hey, I want to book a flight. This is what I'm going to get, right? The way Keela is presenting herself in her business is also part of the branding, Right. And I hate to bring this up because I'm going to go back to McDonald's and rag on them for a little bit. So as much as we love them fast, cheap, quick, when we go through that drive through and we see the little pimply teenager at the drive through, your face, you already know the order is what? Some missing <laughs> some. I got the regular instead of the diet. Right. Uh, but uh, but yeah, no but, ice cream. No oh, ice cream. Right, right. We got something at nine right. o'clock every night. The ice cream machine magically stops working. Just every day right. it ain't working. They just but, ain't got ice cream but, but with branding, we've been now ingrained to know McDonald's is fast, is quick, is cheap. But we also know that it's usually a teenager run, you know what I mean? Little stage, right? We, they're just things that we know, right? That all comes into branding. So let me ask you guys this question. You go and you get, you get an order wrong, right? And you're mad and you're mad and you're mad, right? What you going to do next week when you're hungry? Go to the other McDonald's down the street. They got a different teenager. Go to Taco Bell. <laughs> <laughs> right? Okay. But so but what if I have a bad experience with Travel Fly? Where am I going to go to? The next Travel Fly down the street? Speedia. When you're a small business, <laughs> how important is branding? And how important is the personality of your business? Because you, as a small business owner, are a, I hate to say it, a dime a dozen. How many candle makers do we got out there? How many t-shirt makers we got out there? How many people we got out there selling wigs and lashes? Right? You've got to be set apart from 
everybody else. And you do it with your branding. You do it with your visuals. You do it by showing up in your business. If you're promising X, Y, and Z, that fast, that quick, that cheap. We're expecting fast, quick, and cheap. So, girl, if I'm in that that drive through going on 10 minutes, I'm mad. Why? Because I go to McDonald's for fast, for quick, for cheap, right? That's all part of the cohesive packaging for branding. Think of Saks Fifth Avenue. That's a... When you think of that, you automatically think of high end and people with money, right? That's what they're associated with, right? So what you're putting out there as your as your front, as your personality, as your your logo, as your colors, your font, everything is cohesive in your branding. Um, if you were a daycare, would you have font that was cursive scrolly, and all kinds of cursive? Most people can't even read cursive these days, right? No, you'd have some kind of like block print or like ABC letters or like fingerprint letters or something like that that is representative of your brand. But then if you're a, a wedding venue, are you going to have like a wooden like like uh like a, a western sign or that kitty print with fingerprints no that's when you're going to have the elegant scroll writing right everything is cohesive to make your brand one nice little package to be presented to the world am i does am i making sense to do you understand do you guys understand what i mean by by saying that absolutely absolutely okay. How you okay. how you present yourself is everything to your brand, your business, your tone of even your business, your brand tone, everything, every oh, personality. Right. Well, that's why I said showing up if you're like, rah, 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 but then all of your your social media posts, it's like, oh, kumbaya. And we love everybody that's sending like mixed messages. Right. That doesn't it doesn't compute. You know, you want your your brand voice. Like I said, everything to be cohesive so that nothing seems out of place. Nothing seems out of place, you know? And so that in a nutshell is branding. It is what your business looks like, what it stands for, and how it is presented to the world. Ta-da! Any questions at all, ladies, that you might have at all about this subject, it's pretty easy, pretty straightforward. A lot of people just think it's their logo and that's it. But Yeah, I've heard that a lot, that people just think it's their logo, but it's really a package deal. It's really who you are as a business and how other people see you in your business. Like, so one of the things that bothers me is like, you know, when you get a newsletter from some, someone, I've talked to you about this before, and it sounds like the way that they talk. And right. some of it's like not, proper it's not good English it's and I think right. Jessica will kind of talk about that too and and her segment like right. when you're talking in your email it'll turn even though okay maybe I speak broken English okay I don't really use good grammar all the time like when I'm talking right. but when I'm in my emails and I'm emailing That's somebody different. It's, different. it's different like that you need a professional voice like news anchors casters they don't talk like that in day-to-day -day life but they have a certain way that they talk when they're doing the news because it's setting the tone it sets like when you hear that voice you know okay I'm watching the news this is a news anchor they're right. saying something and if you heard your news anchor using slang or using broken you know not good grammar whatever the case may be you would trust turn them. you yeah. off right Right. You wouldn't trust them. You'd be like, if they can't even speak English, they can't even like tell me about anything at this point. Right. right? It's a turnoff. And so that's the same right. thing in our businesses. Like when you send out a newsletter and you're reading it, if you're having things that are misspelled or things that don't sound right, or it, it it's a total turnoff to the person who's reading. It's like, oh, do they? Like, right. Oh. right. You don't want to give small business vibes. Right. And you don't want to give, um, unorganized vibes either no you don't 
And I'll close with this on branding, especially on social media right now. Have you ladies found that a lot of these um, small businesses are out there on social media just trying to rack up followers? Yes. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Have you seen that? So they'll be like, hey, follow for follow. Hey, I got this many followers. Hey, I got this many followers. So much so that I scroll down their page and I can't tell what their business is. I can't even tell what they do mm -mm. because it's so much follow for follow. Hey, promote here. Hey, promote your business now that you can't even tell what they do. So mm -hmm. again, branding you're looking, that looks desperate to me. That looks desperate. Or I'm going to get on my soapbox one more time. Uh, let's talk about when you're branding as a business, but you got pictures a little nook nook at graduation on your business page. Okay. So think about Mr. Walmart, Mr. Target, Mr. Wendy's. Do they put little nook nook in his graduation or him missing a tooth? Or all that kind of stuff on their business page? Or airing their dirty laundry on their business mm -hmm. page. That's a yes, yes. You're selling me candles and kumbaya, and then the next I post, don't want to hear out. about your marital problems <laughs> that somebody did you dirt. I mean, if you, if and you, you're like, oh, wait a minute, it, what? When do we like, get so sorry? <laughs> what does this have to do with lemon we went from, from candles and, and incense to Mari? You are the father. Like, what? <laughs> Jerry, ding, 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 ding. what? Oh my god! Yeah, it's ridiculous. So, really, again, with the branding, it all comes to like it, it. It it's just your whole business personality, and I hate to say it, but if the personality of the owner is ratchet. The personality of the business can't be that much for, far behind, right? If you're bad in your personal finances and you can't hold nothing, what do you think your business finances are going to be like, right? So it all transfers in. You have to really, you don't always have to be the face of your business. I'm the face of mine because I got a big mouth and I like to talk, right? So that's that. But you don't, if you're a candle person, you don't necessarily have to have a face person. You know what I mean? You can have AI. You know what I mean? Keela, create you all kinds of all kinds of foolishness for content to plop your candle in and throw it out to the world, right? But when you start airing your dirty laundry, you know what I mean? Or you start hustling for likes and followers and doing all of that, it kind of puts a, a bad connotation to your business brand and people may not take you as seriously. They may not think they may not give you a, a chance because the way your, your, your product might be really cool, right? They might be like, that's really cool, but I don't like that. She puts up all that other stuff on her social media. So I don't even want to deal with that. So then you just lost customers, right? So it's all about how you actually present present to the world, your business to the world. And that is branding in a nutshell. <laughs> so thank y'all for joining me today. And next time we talk, we'll be talking about your target market. Because just because you've got this great product or service and you got a brand for it, right? You've created this brand. Well, who are you going to sell it to? We'll talk about that later. See you next time. Hey, y'all. It's Helena Lena with What's Poppin' USA, Small Business Support Network. And thank you for joining us again. Today, I have Miss Keila Reyes with Travel Fly Adventures and Miss Jessica Starks with JD Scribes and the Bond Group. And y'all, we were talking about last week with branding and what your business looks like to the world, presenting it out there in one nice, 
cohesive package, right? What it looks like, what it sounds like, your voice, what it feels like, the customer experience, all of that is branding, right? So now you've got this awesome product, right? You've got this awesome mirror, right? You've got this mirror. So now who are you going to sell it to? That is your target market. So we want to talk about narrowing down a target market. So many people are too broad with their target market. I've got candles and I want to sell them to the world, right? But maybe your candles aren't the right ones that need to go to the soccer mom, right? Maybe they need to go to the exec or the admin who had a long day who's kicking off her heels, right? So it's knowing who you are actually targeting to. So last time we talked about the big brands. We talked about McDonald's, right? And we talked about that it was fast, it was quick, and it was cheap. Who is that targeting to? Broke people. <laughs> people who don't have time. Time. Broke, right. Broke kids with the dollar menu. I think of like college students, right? High school students, struggling people, you know, struggling, you know, young younger folks. I say the younger generation. Then you've got the moms who don't feel like cooking. They're running all these errands. They pick their kid up from karate karate practice or soccer practice and they don't want to cook right so they're zipping through the drive through and it's fast right we usually only get most of us only get 30 minutes for lunch yo we can get in and out of that mcdonald's line fast right it's a fast thing so it's targeted for people who are looking for fast quick cheap is it targeted for people who are looking for Applebee's or who are looking for even less, even up, or how about Ruth Chris or Papa Do's? Is it, is it, is it, is it aiming for them? No. So when you think about who they're targeting for, what do their ads look like? Who's in their ads? Young people. Right. Talking about the dollar menu, talking about the combos and the shareable stuff. Right. They're marketing to that to that young quick. How about the Happy Meals? What do they come with? Toys. Right. And then for the healthier parents that didn't want the fries, girl, they got apple slices. They're trying to hit. Everybody right in that quick fast, cheap market. They know who they're marketing toward, right? When you see those ads, when are they usually on? In the evening time, when everybody's sitting around the boob tube, right? Or when it's kid time, they'll put the Happy Meal commercials on, telling about the latest toy, right? Think about their target market. So then we brought up Wally World, right? Who's their target market? Those busy people who have the kids, who have multiple stores to go to, and they can hit everything in one concise spot under one roof. That is targeting your market, right? So for example, Keela, you have a travel agency, right? So yes, everybody likes to travel. Everybody likes to go somewhere and do something, right? But you can't capture the whole world. So your specialty is the Caribbean, right? You have niched it down from the world to just a few set of islands. And now you are the resident travel expert on the Caribbean, right? 
because you know the different islands, what what's needed in the different islands, the different cultures, you know, the uh, cultural, you know, um, idiosyncrasies that might go on, holidays, you know, you know, weather, you know, the, um, the hurricane season, right? You know, the resorts that are just couples only, you know, the resorts that are family friendly, right? You have niched it down to target a specific population. Again, everybody likes to travel. Everybody likes to go somewhere. But, and although you can help them with pretty much if they want to go everywhere, your specialty, right, is targeting those who want to go to the Caribbean and have a beach experience, right? So I'll flip it back on, I'll flip it back on me. So my business is to actually help other small businesses. Well, there are so many small businesses out there, right? And there are so many businesses out there that don't really need me, but there are some that are and that do. And I, my business looks for those people who are kind of like those businesses on Facebook that want to go from hobby status to like big girl or big boy business status, but they're not quite sure how to do it. They don't have a lot of money to pay somebody else. And they'd rather kind of figure it out and do it themselves before they fork over any money. So my business premise is DIY business. I will help you do it yourself. Yes, I do small business. Does that mean I want to help the world? I could, but I target a very specific population and that's what I target my marketing towards, my voice towards, my books towards, my personality towards. I'm approachable to those small businesses. All of that is targeting a specific market for your product or for your service. You cannot take on the world. You have to narrow it down. If we look at Saks Fifth Avenue. Remember, I mentioned that and both of y'all were like, oh, yeah, that's kind of like highfalutin, right? And automatically, when I say Saks, you're like, oh, that's out of my price range. Why? Because we're not their target market. We're not. We don't make enough money to be their target market. If we think it's too expensive off the bat before we even look at a website, step foot in the door. And this is all off of just what we heard about Saks Fifth Avenue. Have either one of you ever stepped into a Saks Fifth Avenue? But you already know or think about what it must be like, right? Pricey as hell. I can't afford nothing in here but maybe a pair of socks, right? A, or a pair of slippers, if that, because they still going to be about $80, $90, $100, So. Out of our price range. So that is the target. We're not sex Fifth Avenue target market. They are very honed in on a on a on a educational level. They're on a how uh, an income, a household income level. They're looking at um, the other items that you buy, other places that you shop. That is all honing in on your target market. Does that make does that make sense? Does that make sense? Because sometimes just because, like I said, we have a mirror doesn't mean that everybody needs this type of mirror. <clears throat> well, who needs this type of mirror? Maybe the people that cut their hair, right? So they could see in the back when they're, when they're lining themselves up or people that are doing their makeup, right? These small mirrors are only targeted toward certain folks. These aren't targeted toward people to go ahead and hang on their walls to be like a mirror on the wall or something. This market, this, this mirror has a very specific target market. And so as a small business, you have to find out and you have to decipher what your actual target market is. Who is your audience? And you have to speak to them, right? Keela, if you're trying to speak to the, the couple who is getting married that wants to go to the Sandals Resort, like in Barbados or so, you're not going to be throwing up 
And like I said, a newlywed couple, you're not going to be throwing up like hedonism, right? You're not going to be throwing up like, you know, like family friendly, like kid centric type stuff, right? You know who you're pinpointing, right? So that's the voice that you're using. You're speaking to those people. The, the ads that you use, the content that you do with AI, tell it what you want and let it target that lovey-dovey couple, you know, embraced on the sand with the waves, you know, crashing up. That's what they want to see. Or they lay in a hammock cupcaking. That's what they want to see. We're clanking glasses at, at sunset, smoochy face. Those are the ads that they want to see, right? They don't want to see a kid on a slide. They don't want to see that kind of stuff. So knowing who your, your target is, your audience is, and who you're speaking to really will help you be less frustrated because you're pinpointing the exact people that need you and cutting out all the extra people that don't. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? So again, your brand is what you look like, what you're presenting to the world, and your target market is who you are presenting your brand to strategically. And I'm talking about when you go through your, have either of you ever placed any ads on Facebook or Instagram? You've done it, right? What do they ask you? What age group? Everything you can possibly think. What age group do you want? Are they male or they female? What other things do they like? Are their interests? Where are they located at? All of that stuff, right? So, Keela, you're not going to target people in Jamaica to go to Barbados. They are a damn island, right? But you're going to target people in the U.S. in these frigid-ass cold states right now that are wanting some sunshine to take their booties down to the Caribbean, right? You're targeting a specific market. Well, even when you're doing those ads, right, Jessica, they're asking you all those different questions so they can tailor it and target it to your market. So one of the ways that if you don't know what your target market is, do either of you use your analytics on any of your social media? Okay. So if you have a small business and you are in professional mode, Take a moment to look at the back end of your Instagram, your TikTok, your Facebook. Do you know it will tell you the time of day people most engage with your stuff? It'll tell you if they're male, if they're female, where they're located at, and how old they are. That will tell you, hey, that means... I got the moms, the soccer club moms between this age and this age with kids that are looking at my stuff. So that means I need to target my content and tell my AI helper, right? Hey, I need some content posts for the soccer mom or for the karate mom, that busy mom for, you know, t-shirts or for whatever the case is, right? And let that content be tailored to that. You can use AI for that, right? But it's tailoring it with your target market. So if you don't know what your target market is, go behind the scenes in professional mode on your social media and check your analytics out if you don't know and keep that in mind. People of a certain age speak a certain way. Right. I'm 52 years old, even though I know what that's cap means. I don't say that's cap. And for y'all of y'all who don't know what that means, that's just the young people's way of saying you lying, you lying, you lying. That's cap. Right. But in my business, if I'm writing something out in my social media post, I'm not going to say, I don't know. If you buy the, you know, don't listen to this coach or that coach, that's cap. You need to buy my book instead. You know what I mean? Like you don't use that jargon in your, you speak to the, you speak to your, now if my audience was 
them youngins, right? Them youngin kids. And that's who I was tailoring to. Then maybe I would use that verbiage. But I'm 52 years old and my business is not tailored to that. So I don't use that. If Does that make sense? Does that make sense? So your target market is who your brand is going after, who your customer base is or who you want them to be and who you are going to go after to try to sell your um, products or services to. And that is target marketing. So next week, we will actually be talking about creative juices, getting them going and thinking outside the box when you do have these small businesses. Because truth be told, some of our content and stuff gets stale. It gets old, right? And we are like, damn, like I said, everybody got a candle business. What's going to set my candle business apart from your candle business, Keela, or your candle business, Jessica, right? I've got to come up with something like really creative in order to catch the attention because everybody has the same business, right? So next week, we'll be talking about thinking a little more outside the box. See you then. All right, everyone. Uh, thank you all for coming back. Um, my name is Jessica Starks. I'm here with my friends Keela of Travel Fly Adventures and Lena of What's Poppin' USA. And I am the owner of JD Scribes and Bond Small Business Group. I've had these businesses there uh, eight and seven right now. So, of course, I've seen a lot of different things when it comes to entrepreneurs and business eight owners. And and seven years? Like yeah. Thank that you. deserves thank a round of applause. Get it, girl. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> we got some knowledge up in here. Big time. Yeah. Get it, girl. Well, you know, you know, you know. Oh, <laughs> but, um, you know, I've seen a lot of different things. I've been through a lot of different things. Um, and one of the biggest things I've noticed is how important communication is and how powerful it is. Um, whether you're working in your business or you're just networking and different things like that. So today, the first thing I'm going to talk about is how to make your message matter, which is also my tagline with JD Scribes, make your message matter. Shameless plug. So basically when I'm talking about making your message matter, I'm meaning that whatever it is that you're saying to your audience, like uh, Lena already talked about um, your branding and how you present yourself. So it's whatever you're saying directly or indirectly, um, that's what matters. And there's three main things you want it to be. So you want it to be profound, you want it to have an impact, and you want it to be relevant, right? So before anything else, I know y'all probably have heard this before, especially with marketing and things like that. But it's so important that you know your audience, like Lena has already mentioned, and you also know what your goals are which is something she's also talked about, right? Mm -hmm. So let's just think about it in simpler terms instead of thinking like, you know, target marketing and things like that. Let's make it personal. So there's different people in our lives. We deal with them differently. We have different intentions with them. So of course, we're going to talk to them differently. We're going to deal with them differently, right? So for example, if I'm talking to Keila, we're going to talk differently than she would with one of her travel clients, right? Correct. Right. So if she's talking to say her mama, she's gonna talk to her mama different than she's gonna talk to her sister, right? right? And why exactly do we do that? We do that because we know like the <laughs> position, right? We know the positions they play in our lives. They have a different role. Now you might cuss your sister out. Don't you cuss <laughs> out your mama. That's not how that works. Right, it's not. <laughs> Might not be so anymore. All gone. <laughs> exactly, exactly. We know. So, um, so that's how you have to approach the people that you're talking to. You know, in your audience, your customers, and your potential customers. So now let's think about it the same way when it comes to your goals and your intentions. So again, you would talk to like let's say you want to go on a trip. You've already talked to Keila. 
You already got it mapped out. Now you just got to pay for it. If I wanted to say, hey, Lena, you know, I was looking at this thing. and You know, I just thought it'd be great if we could take this trip. Tell me what you think. You know, give you all the details, right? Right. If I have a husband or a significant other, I'm not going to be like, okay, so she told me this is the estimated cost. I'm not going to do that. You're going to change your voice up. You might put some perfume on. You know, you got to switch it up. So, because uh, you got a different guy, you know who you're talking to. You got the same goal. It's the same goal. Your approach is different, right? Exactly, exactly. And so that's how you have to do it in your marketing. Right. <laughs> right, right. You do what you got to do to get the results you want. Right. That's exactly what happened. So another thing that I think people might overlook is also thinking of culture. So I noticed this a lot uh, over the MLK holiday. Now, as Black people. Oh, you can't hear you. Okay, sorry, I kept getting a call. Okay, you said go. black people and it cut off. It was like, nope. <laughs> it shut you down. Oh, it said, don't you talk about us like that? <laughs> I'm like, no. <laughs> okay, that was funny. Let's go back. I'm gonna redo that one. We gotta cut that out. Okay. <laughs> so, what you want to do is be culturally relevant. Yes. So. Thinking back, we just got past the MLK holiday. So naturally, of course, African-Americans, it's more important to us, right? So if I'm talking to somebody who's maybe white or Hispanic or Asian, it might not mean the same thing to them. Not saying he ain't important to everybody. He loved all of us, you know? Right. Yeah. yeah. So, but it's a different thing. Same way if maybe uh, you talked about something like Cinco de Mayo, or St. Patrick's Day, right? They're different. Right. They're you know more important to other people, right. and even thinking about how that will work in your business, right? So let's say you are a Mexican restaurant. I expect you to talk about Cinco de Mayo. If you're not talking about Cinco de Mayo, why are you a Mexican restaurant? <laughs> Same thing if it's an Asian, um, like a Chinese right. place, Chinese New Year or something right. like that. If right. you're not talking about it, what you here for? Right. Like it, it doesn't make sense. Right. So, and even when it's coming to other people's holidays, maybe when you're talking about Jewish holidays or people who celebrate Kwanzaa, you can right. still be respectful of those Correct. holidays. Correct. Um, even if you don't necessarily celebrate them, you Correct. can still, you know, be sensitive to it. Of course. It's like, you know, um, there's a lot of uproar with the Redskins. That's offensive to some people. Some people don't feel that way, but we have to understand that why they feel that way. So right. always make sure that you're being mindful and you can't please everybody. Let me know right. that. But you still have to do your best to be mindful. Politically correct mm -hmm. almost, right? Almost like yeah. politically correct. Yeah. Right, right. So this even goes into how you respond to feedback or how you respond to customers and just how you do customer service in general. Now I've seen it personally. Oh. I've seen a lot of mess in my years. <laughs> A lot of mess. I'm just gonna be honest, a lot of mess. <laughs> so it could have been a situation, a Maury situation, like right. Keila mentioned previously. Yeah. How, how do you <laughs> right? How do you handle <laughs> situations like that? You know, like we got to think. First of all, let's be human. If somebody came on my page talking crazy, yes, I'm gonna be mad. I'm gonna be upset. I'm gonna figure out where they at. You know, right. the natural right. thing. But you still have to be professional because other people are seeing that. So if you but can get on there, is hiding the comment or restricting yeah. the person, it's not yeah. just full fledged going to war back and forth with the person. Right, exactly. You know I mean? And even if you do respond, be a grown up. Yes. With just be a grown up. Right. right. Yeah. And I've seen this with testimonials. If people, like, they may leave a review on Google. Be like, well, I really like the product. It, right. The package was open. I got it. You know, whatever the case may be. Right. And then you go back and forth with them. What does that look like for you? One, that shows me clearly you ain't getting no business because you got time 
to go back and forth with these people on these comments. Because if petty. you really was busy, the word petty. Come comes on now. Petty. 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 Are we so, petty? The way you, you are so right, though, Jessica, the way you respond mm -hmm. to a customer. Can I tell a little story? And I, 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 I promise it won't be long. I promise it won't be long. So this is the worst interaction I've ever had with a small business. Okay. So, so I bought a bathing suit and the bathing suit was a white bathing suit. Now we already know when you wear a white bathing suit, when it gets wet, you got it right. We already know. So with that, we have to make sure when we buy a white bathing suit, it's lined or so, you know what I mean? It has lining or padding or something so you can't see through, right? So I purchased this this bathing suit from this young lady and the bathing suit was confused. So my body, I'm a size six, okay? I was 130 pounds at the time that I got it. So I got a, a, a medium one piece, one piece bathing suit. It was a one piece. It was modest, but the bathing suit was white. And it was confused. It didn't know if it wanted to be a bikini or boy shorts. Like it was, like it was weird, right? It was, it was, it was built very, very strange. And so I review my products and I did not blast the woman. I said, the bathing suit obviously is not cut properly, like for my body or whatever. I'm pulling it out of my crotch, like the whole thing, right? And so she sends me a message and it's like, I saw your review. And I was like, mm -hmm. okay, well, I'm sorry, but, um, and I was, I was like, well, is there something I can do? Can I return this? She's like, well, no, because it's a personal use item. And I was like, yeah, okay, bathing suit, no problem. And I was just like, well, she goes, well, you can buy something else. And I was just like, well, I'm not in the habit of throwing money after like good money after bad. So I was like, what you can do is if you want to give me like a discount or a discounted shipping or, and I'll buy something else. I'll buy something else, but if you want to give me a, she told me, hand to God, this is not what you do. She told me she was living in a homeless shelter and that the clothes, <laughs> and that the clothes were on the bathroom floor in the homeless shelter and that she could not afford to send out free items. What? First of all, the image that went through I've my left head, the building. <laughs> the image that went through my head of like roaches or whatever crawl. Oh, this is what I pictured in my head. What? It was like roaches crawling over because it was on your bathroom floor in the homeless shelter. So number one. <laughs> Or two or three. I don't know where you want to go with this. <coughs> but this is a true, true story. <laughs> Wait a minute. And it was in L.A. So it was a homeless shelter in L.A. I've left the building. <laughs> so, 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 Jessica. I so, I didn't know how to respond. I was like. Okay. Don't you <laughs> but you don't that's not what you do. Like as mm -hmm. so as, and it just... if I was on the receiving end as the business, I would have been like, I'm so sorry it didn't fit you. It's a personal use item, so I cannot take it back as a return. But what I can do is offer you free shipping on another item or maybe mm -hmm. like a 10 or 15 percent discount on this other item so that way it can make up for not no what i got was it's on the bathroom floor in the homeless shelter where i live <laughs> jessica no that no that's not what you do that's that's not that's crazy i don't even know what to say I, about I, that I, 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 <laughs> like I feel like hanging up. I'm done. <laughs> She's like, I think I need a drink. <laughs> Ooh, that was a lot. <laughs> if somebody, okay. 
if somebody told me that, I think I would, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know if I could have handled it that well. So do you but know the, the disgust that I felt after I yes, had I it on my body? Yes, I do, because being a slight germaphobe <laughs> myself. Oh, my God. Like, okay, uh, what now, huh? You've got it. Am I being punked? Right. <laughs> I was like, you got to be kidding me. I, I could not really believe that she said that to me. So you really do have some people. But remember I said, if you're ratchet, not because she lives in a homeless shelter, but if you're ratchet in your personality, in your personal life, it's going to mm -hmm. transfer over to your business life. I don't care what is going on in your life. You do not tell. Mm -hmm. I don't know her. I didn't know her. She was like a random person that I bought something for. I have no rapport with her. She is not a friend. We're not on a first name basis. Like none of that. You know, that's just she not something were. That you like, you know better. <laughs> Girl, I, I, like, I had your shit before. on my bathroom floor before you put it on your coochie. Oh, <laughs> you don't do that. Oh, fine. Do that. We are not friends anymore. Don't you say you no know, mess like that. This so, is not a PSA. Don't you no know, mess like that. I don't know what intention her message was having at that point, Jessica, but her point got across that obviously she ain't got money for this. But to be in business. Wow. Yeah. That was yeah. Yeah, but you know that that just makes me think though when it's stuff like that. Another part of your messaging is to not let people see you get frazzled. Because if it's something like that now, you know, she's really in the shelter. I hate that for her. And she's right. trying to break but, it. But don't yeah, tell me what's that. What's the commercial? Never let them see you sweat? What's yes. that commercial? You know what I'm saying? Like, Yeah. You you just, no, don't do that. Because <laughs> I you think about that, like, and yours was a real testimonial. You weren't happy with it. But there's also people who will make up stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I saw this firsthand uh, to, with a restaurant I represent. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, that particular lady, they were doing things for Thanksgiving. And she uh, put some pictures up in the comments claiming that the stuff was burnt and it didn't look like it was supposed to look and all this stuff. Right. So I'm like, all right, I talked to my client. I'm like, y'all messed this lady's order up because I need to know, you know, what's going on. Right. And the client sent me photos of like screenshots with her like, oh, yeah, this was so great. And it's going to feed my whole family and talking about can she get it early? And they're like, well, if you get it early, it's not going to be, you know, hot straight from us. Right. You have to warm it up. Yeah, I'll warm it up. So the pictures she sent were of her reheating it and burning and it. She herself. Burned it. And right. She burned it. Right. So there's going to be customers who do that also. Try. You have to be the bigger person. Was she wrong? Definitely. But you, you can't have those back and forths with people. Mm. You just got to let them go. Because for everybody who's going to complain, there's several others who are going to pray. And there's you other the people who are watching that mm -hmm. interaction also. And you don't mm -hmm. want to lose other customers because they're like, oh, girl, she just cussed out her customer. I ain't ordering nothing right. for her me i think of when you're saying that jessica i think of all the reviews that i read for like hotels and different things like that mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and they all have a pretty standard response um right. it's either mm -hmm. thank you so much it is it's very scripted positive you know message we we strive to you know take care of our our right. clients and we're happy that you had this great experience or it's i'm sorry you feel that way um i'm sorry that that happened to you you know, let us try to make this up to you this kind of right. way. Or reach out to this number and we'll, you know, work right. with you, blah, blah, blah. So maybe even having a standardized message for your own right. business. So that way, if you do have good That's feedback or smart. negative feedback, kind of to the page out of the hotels, you know, industry. That's smart, and just yeah, that. That's good. That's, That's true. Really That's you can use your AI to do that. So you don't even have to think about it. And you already got it set up. <laughs> <laughs> exactly so that's smart though yeah it really is and so just thinking about i'm still stuck on this. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
That was just that was terrible. <laughs> and see, it left a lasting impression. You're never gonna go back. Ever. And then if you, you know of a friend that's like, oh, I saw this shy. Mm -hmm, don't go over there. Because I've even seen mm -hmm. other stuff that was cute, and I was like, mm -mm, not at. Yeah. Where's that and at? It, was, it took that one interaction, that. and it ruined the whole thing. <laughs> And I will never, but that's what I was talking about. Like, if you have a bad experience at McDonald's, you just go to the one down the corner where that one teenager isn't working. But if you right. have a bad experience with a small business, it's we're it. There is no mm -hmm. other travel fly or JD scribes or what's popping. We're it. And if we mess up, our business reputation plummets faster than it rises. Right. You know what I mean? We'll be bad mouth faster than we will be given applause and kudos. You know what I mean? So you really do have to be mindful with the way you interact with your customers because they're not doing you a favor. They're spending their money. If somebody is spending their money with you, then right. you need to be on your P's and Q's because if you were spending your money with somebody else, you would feel the same way. Don't yeah. take it personally just because it's your business. Because if it you was if the tables were turned, you know what I mean, you would feel the same way. So yeah. 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 Being That's intentional true. is and deliberate. Yeah, you're right, Jesse. You're right. And I think even just in my closing, because we we've said a lot. It's yeah. a lot. But I just, you know, I think about if you do an interview, if you're on a Zoom call with a client, if you're networking. Every time you do that, if this was the last time you did this for your business, would this represent you well? That's what you should always think about. What is it saying about you? What is it saying about the character of your business? What is it saying right. about your business personality? What is that saying? So as long as you remain intentional and you stay true to what you believe in your brand, you're good to go. So. Very true. That's my little quick uh, intro into messaging and communication one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. And I will see y'all next time.